Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who adorned the sacred body of your church with the confessions of holy martyrs, grant, we pray, that just as the glorious passion of St. Ignatius of Antioch, which we celebrate today, brought him eternal splendor, so it may be for us unending protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplished all things according to the intent of his will, so that we might exist for the praise and his glory, we who were first hoped in Christ. In him you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Exalt, you just, in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten string lyre, chant his praises. For upright is the word of the Lord and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Blessed the nations whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. From heaven, the Lord looks down. He sees all mankind. kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, so many people were crowding together that they were trampling one another underfoot. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, beware of the leaven, that is the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. There is nothing concealed that will not be revealed nor secret that will not be known. 
Therefore, whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed on the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but after that can do no more. I shall show you whom to fear. Be afraid of the one who, after killing, has the power to cast into Gehenna. Yes, I tell you, be afraid of that one. Are not five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet not one of them has escaped the notice of God. Even the hairs of your head have been all counted. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Be not afraid, John Paul II, St. John Paul II used those words when he was elected Pope and announced to the world. And as Christians, we certainly need not be afraid. Why? Well, first of all, we go to the first reading and really two words or phrases struck me in both our first reading as well as our gospel as I pondered these sacred words this morning, and the first was the fact that first installment, down payment, we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit, as St. Paul tells us, when Jesus purchased us, he bought us, redeemed us. That's what the word redeem means, you know. When you go to the store, you redeem your dollars for something else. You're purchasing something. It's an exchange. And with that exchange, we're sealed in the Holy Spirit, and the kingdom of God now becomes a reality within us. But in a sense, it's a down payment because we're not there yet. It's not fully realized. It's now a real possibility. Let's just hope and pray that we don't default, right? Otherwise, there's repossession, so to speak. First installment, wonderful phrase to dwell upon is what Jesus did for us. He put a down payment down on us. In a sense, it's credit already with possession, if you want to think of it that way. I think another way of looking at it is it's sort of like a woman who's now carrying a child within her. It's sort of the same sense. She's very much aware that there is a real life within her. It's already been planted. It's growing. It's reality. But it's not yet fully realized, is it? Not too long ago, she certainly didn't know whether it was male or female. And once it's born, she certainly did not know yet what this child would become. An artist, a musician, a businessman or woman, whatever. But she knows it's there and it's real. The kingdom of heaven is like that. It's already here, it's already within us, but it's not yet there because it's not yet fully realized, and a lot of that is up to us to cooperate with the grace that God gives us in our lifetime in this world so that it will be fully realized. Yes, we have been sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, anointed. And with that, then, we are like leaven or yeast. The second word that I was pondering this morning, a word that came up in the gospel, but in a negative way. But also we know elsewhere that Jesus likens us as, or he likens the kingdom of God, which is within us. We know that he teaches elsewhere that it's like the mustard seed or like yeast that's kneaded into the dough. It has a great effect if we allow it. 
And we need to be that good yeast, the yeast that does have a positive effect on this world, not the bad leaven or the bad yeast of the Pharisees. And Jesus names it for exactly what it is, hypocrisy. Those Pharisees, for the most part, were hypocrites. Or as Jesus tells us elsewhere in the gospel, like whitened, glistening sepulchers, all pretty on the outside, but what's inside a whitened sepulcher? Dead man's bones, decay, rot. In other words, Jesus is talking about a dichotomy here that we certainly need to avoid as Christians. You know, the word hypocrite is a, it's a Greek word. It's the Greek word for an actor. You know, the Greeks, the ancient Greeks were big with not only philosophy, but drama as well. And the actor or the hypocrite would come on stage with a mask some sort of costume, and then would assume a character outside of who they really were. That's what actors do, right? Acting. And depending upon how convincing they were, because most of the people in the crowd knew that person, but if that person suddenly became someone else in their acting, in their hypocrisy, then the applause would be very loud. That's okay in the world of drama. But as Christians, we're not living in the world of drama. We're living, hopefully, the life of the kingdom of God that's planted within us, hidden, revealing, becoming, and hopefully reaching fruition in the next life. We can never afford to put on a show then. We can't be fake as Christians. We can be holier than thou art on the outside, but if our inside is not in sync with that, then we are no better than those Pharisees. Rot, dead man's bones within the whitened and glistening sepulchers. We need to be the yeast and leaven of Christ. And we certainly can have a powerful, powerful impact on this world if our life is not just a show of Christianity, but is real Christianity. And our saint of the day is a perfect example of that, Saint Ignatius of Antioch. He gave his whole life for Christ. Literally, most of us here will probably never have that opportunity, but we can be martyrs in a different way. We turn our backs on the unbelieving ways of this world. We forsake it. We're in it, but let's not become it. Otherwise, we're then again like those Pharisees. The intercessions are on page 53. We trust in God's concern for every person that he has created and redeemed through his son. Let us therefore renew our prayer to him. O God of mercy, guide us towards spiritual growth. For your name's sake, do not abandon us forever. Accept us, for our hearts are humble and our spirits contrite. You have called us to a prophetic vocation in Christ. Let us remember all our beloved dead, especially in today's Mass. We remember the repose of the soul of Lorraine Pregler and also for Barbara Baguette, whose funeral mass is today. 
and also for the priests of our diocese who died on this day, Father Alois Bastian in 1954. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you are the font of justice and truth. Grant that we might put our trust in you, that one day we might live with you forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 